You do what you do for love. I sit here and teach you for love. What you do with it. If your life changes or it doesn't change, if you forget in a moment, it's, it's yours. This is my love for you. We'll do like this. I'll remind you a bit what we spoke about last time. And then we'll reflect a little moment to see where we stand. And then we will see how to move forward. So basically, when it comes to karma yoga, of course, this can be extended to work in general um, with some fundamental differences. But in the case of karma yoga, we basically need two things. Yeah? Enthusiasm and relaxation, which will, in the ultimate level, lead to this inspired, enthusiastic sense of integration and a total detachment. This is the divine ideal. If you have that attitude, you are working in the attitude of karma yoga and this wheel of samsara, of maya, that is binding us into more and more difficult destiny, that wheel is going backwards. It is unwinding. You are in the process. Yeah, it's a knot and my soul is stuck with all sorts of heavy load and heavy debt that I have done unconsciously, but now I start to untie and pay off my debts. I'm on the way out. If this attitude is maintained in action, yeah, perfect, enthusiastic integration and total detachment. And that leads us basically to two scales. The scale of indifference, which is the absence of a healthy engaging force, and enthusiasm, which is the abundance of a wonderful engaging force. This is the axis of energy. It's how much life we put in the action of Karma Yoga. And on the lower axis, as you can see, we have consciousness, which will determine how stressed or relaxed we are, how attached or detached. Are we asking for something? Do we want something? Are we afraid we don't get it? Are we lurking to get it? That will determine how tensed, how selfish, how attached we are to the action. If we are just doing as a natural action, as you know, the river flows, it doesn't say, yeah, I'll get to the sea, watch me, watch me, oh, here I'm there, a few more thousands of kilometers, and I'm... He's just flowing and he has more energy than we have clicking on our computer or cleaning the floors. He's just doing his thing. So this combined attitude, which includes basically only two ingredients, if that attitude is accomplished inside of us, our journey home is determined. And if we continue with this attitude, we will arrive home to freedom. We will arrive to this perfect state of karma yoga and we will be free. So we just need to learn these two fundamental things as action. When we are in total absence of relaxation and in total absence of a driving force, we are deep into indifference on the one side and total stress because I can't do it but I need to do it and I have to do it and blah, 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 then we are in a selfish destructive mood the more we are put in this frame of work or frame of karma yoga the worse we feel the worse our consequences we will just destroy everything around us energetically we will be tense and angry conflictual hateful uh, unskilled unengaged destructive yeah not to stop and contemplate if you are there. If we have a high level of engagement, we are really on about doing a good job, but we're super tense. It's my work. Nobody take it from me. I will get so much praise. I will get so much uh, benefits. I will get promotion. I will show everyone that I'm better. Yeah, we have engagement on the one side, but detachment almost zero. And we work engaged, but in a selfish way. We want a selfish benefit. Then normally the work will go okay. We will be able to do some stuff. We'll get some stuff done. 
but we will be tensed, stressed, and on the human level, we will be quite destructive. Even if the work itself will be good, our interhuman relationship will be quite tensed. And if somebody else is not doing their job, we'll get aggressive towards them. If somebody comments and gives us feedback, even if it's good feedback, we can get aggressive there. So the interhuman relationship is not very good. And the work, it's done. You know, it's not inspired and so forth, but it's done. There is energy, actual energy and interest there. On the lower side there, we have when relaxation is high, but driving force is low. This is extremely common in the Karma Yoga environment in the world. And please uh, identify yourself. Yeah, we're speaking so you can identify yourself. Where do you stand in this for? There is this like yeah it's karma yoga and it's cool and it's spiritual what i'm doing oh and if i do it slower i feel even better it's slower and slow my god karma yoga is amazing and it's like a masturbation kind of karma yoga you find the way to work which is the most pleasant and in the shade and like this oh and this this particular tiny part of the task that i will do this is it fits right at me. And then when I'm done, ah, what a good karma yoga day. Pwah, perfect, perfect. Yeah, this is extremely uh, common. And uh, we've had uh, here in Thailand a lot of this. You can spot them by now from three kilometers before they even come with an application. We can see, okay, it's one of those. The work is done very irresponsibly and the worker is very happy. <laughs> yeah, this... <laughs> This, I, I make it a little bit like a caricature, but it's, it's a certain scale and we, we sit over there. And then there is the Karma Yogi. That's a very special and very elevated connection in which we feel really engaged, we really care, and it, the work is ecstatic, is detached. And if it breaks, it breaks. And if it works, it works. But I do it the best so that it works the best. And then, oh, somebody took it from us. Fine. Let it be. But we've done our part. My hands are clean. My conscience is clean. There is a certain... You give it all. You ask for nothing. And it's the most natural thing. It's really like a river flowing. It flows. It gives life. And it just, it's just natural. A river doesn't have to reincarnate. It's just a river. And you can work like that. Like a force of nature. Did you notice we are made of a force of nature? I can move these hands because I have something more complex than a river in my hand. We have a force of nature inside of us and it wants to work. It wants to do karma yoga. And this kind of natural, healthy, selfless, enthusiastic way of doing things is our sweet spot, our universal eye of the storm. Nothing sticks to us when we work with such enthusiasm and yet with this deep calm, not wanting anything from the work. So I invite you to take a moment and close your eyes and see where you stand. I invite you to see yourself, yeah, we can take from a scale from 1 to 10, 10 is the perfect enthusiasm, and uh, 1 is total indifference, and then on the other side, 1 is horrible tension and stress, just the word work already, you need relaxation, anti-anxiety pills, if you just hear about working, or 10 would be a total state of relaxation, a perfect detachment in work. So take a moment and rate yourself there, or we will take a moment and rate ourselves. Where do we stand? And then as you have these two, you can check it also for your work if that's the main thing that you do, but for Karma Yoga it's more clear. 
and then see what combination of a state this brings. And if you have two particular karma yogas or two particular jobs, you can check for both. And then see what kind of state does it give you. How much erosion do you have from the work? Does the work make you tired or happy? Does it energize you or drain you? Do you become more creative or more contracted? And that's very good, my dears. You see, essentially, the way to bring both relaxation and detachment and enthusiasm, or one of the ways, we will touch this um, in many different ways, not just today, is the purity of the driving force. When we examine why we do, we will find if we are doing karma yoga, at least a little bit of a selfless motivation, at least a little bit of a call of dharma, of a heart inspiration, a little bit of love, and a certain amount of selfishness. A selfish motivation will make us tense. It is impossible to be detached and selfish when we are in action. And you can easily meet it when what you do, when you find an obstacle, in what you do. You plan to do it then and something came and intervened and then you have to think about doing it. Or you did it and it got destroyed. Or you did it and it takes longer. If you get very tensed, it means you are searching for a personal selfish reward. It's very easy. Underground, there is a selfish motivation and the result will be tension. And then if we push the driving force and we get very engaged in the work and our motivation is predominantly selfish, the more engaged we get, the more tensed we get. For me, when we were starting the school here, I had, and still have, but I had uh, even more, a lot of selfish motivations. I wanted to prove myself and I thought I have a lot of value that nobody has seen and so forth. And I was already 35 and I wanted already to get some praise for the values and so forth that I have. And I would really stress out myself and stress out the team. And it was you know, when somebody would not do their job or I would not do my, my job or as a combination, our communication, something wouldn't happen, I would get tense, slightly aggressive and tensed. And everybody else would get tensed and as a coordinator, so everybody else would get tensed. And we had a pretty, two degrees here and there, tense team because the driving force was as such. And the, um, the goal, or let's say one of the keys for karma yoga is to clear out the weeds of a selfish motivation. And it's the easiest to do. You don't know what's my motivation, I'm doing it. But when you hit a blockage, it will reveal itself. It's taking longer. <clears throat> I, I'm not succeeding. <clears throat> What am I not, what, what, what is it that I want to get? Is it praise? Is it forgiveness? Is it validation? Is it to show that I'm better than, what is it that I want? It becomes very obvious over there. And then it's very good to reflect and to clear out. So the negative motivation would lead to tension. And they will not allow us to get very engaged without being too tense. You, gotta, you have to work a bit and then I have to do something else. I have to sit in front of the screen. The work kills me. I work, I do karma yoga, it erodes me. I need to go in the pool, I need to go and watch a movie. Or like, like uh, one of you said, I do this and then I have to take a long vacation or something. I forget about work for a while because it tenses me up so much because I can't contain it. So one thing is to clear out the weeds of the selfish motivation. 
And then the other part is to make the healthy driving force, the heart's inspiration, to grow. What makes the heart inspiration grow? Essentially, it is the integration in the whole. The love for the community, the love for spirituality, the love for God, the love for the universe. You do it from love for something that you love, as that action. You know, when you really love someone, you really love your grandmother. And you make some kind of, let's say you are a child, five or six years old, and you make a little something, statue, card, some kind of artwork. And in the process of going to your grandmother, it rains, it breaks, it looks like a lump of something. But it's obvious that you put like a few hours to make that for your grandmother. And you go and you give it to her. It feels amazing. She feels amazing. You feel amazing. This is the attitude. You do what you do for love. I sit here and teach you for love. What you do with it. If your life changes or it doesn't change, if you forget in a moment, it's, it's yours. This is my love for you. Writing this lecture, speaking this lecture, this is my offering of love. And if it sits and it brings fruit, let it bring fruit. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. But this is my part and I'm at peace when I do it and I feel love as I do it. And I have more energy now than I did when I started. Because love fuels it. If I was very concerned, how are they taking it? Somebody is eating, somebody is looking away, I don't think they get it. They always forget my lectures. There would be a lot of erosion. I would get quite tense and the, this act of giving this lecture would drain me. And this is the sign of Karma Yoga. Karma Yoga feeds. When you do Karma Yoga, you enter the task with a certain energy and you come out with more energy. A particular energy, it's not now ad infinity, you never need to sleep now because you're peeling potatoes with so much love for your grandmother. It's not to that degree, but there is a certain psychic regeneration which happens. And when you go to sleep after a good day of karma yoga, you've done your place in the universe. You sleep like a bear, yeah, that has done his bear thing throughout the day and now can sleep. You sleep like a river that finally met the ocean and that's it. It has completed the process of flowing. There is a, there is a natural flow into it when we don't interfere. So this process of loving the whole will give us the fruit, the right driving force, the heart's inspiration, the healthy enthusiasm, which doesn't bring tension. And then constantly you will have weeds. Different motivations. The ego says, oh, he's doing this. He seems to be enjoying. Good, let me this and that. Oh, that task is more pleasant. That task is more... No problem, no problem. Just clear the weeds, clear the weeds. Return, look at the driving force and clear the weeds. And in this process, you see, when you learn Karma Yoga, anything that you do will be like a spiritual practice, gradually. When you move and you have six level of detachment and relaxation and six, yeah, more than on the upper side and six enthusiasm out of ten, already the work will bring some kind of spiritual benefit. And you do your hours of meditation and your hours of work of Karma Yoga, they are also spiritual practice. And you in time can, in time, you can move and do eight, ten hours, twelve hours a day of spiritual practice because you do Karma Yoga, whatever you do, it becomes your Dharma. The rest of the time you practice. And it has this light feeling. You know, there could pass weeks when you do Karma Yoga, when you don't even consider that you need entertainment, that you need a moment. You finish your Karma Yoga, you finish your practice, you go to sleep, a day, a week, a month pass, 
And there is such a feeling of balance, such a joy in the practice, a joy in the karma yoga, a joy in everything, that you don't feel, oh, I have to sit and compensate in front of the screen. No, because there was no tension involved. There was just an ever-expanding happiness. This I love, and then I do this which I love, and then I do this which I love, and then I do that which I love. And there is no need to now, okay, I gave you some, now give me some screen time or hangout time or whatever time. It, it becomes self-sustaining, like nature is self-sustaining, yeah? The forest is not like, come on, I've been a forest for centuries here. Give me a moment of compensation. You put a big screen and the forest watches some Korean soap operas for a century to relax. If I had to keep the equilibrium, the squirrels on the one side and the worms on the other side and these bloody annoying birds, and give me some time. It's a natural thing and it gives this naturalness. And it is, it is such, a, such a wonderful skill to learn. Because as long as action is governed by egoism, do what you do in your spiritual practice. The big portion of your week or a huge portion of your time will go down to egoism. Unless you work an hour a week, but that's also a very egoistic life. Where do you? What, you don't give any value to the world and you still take. So, it is absolutely... It is not a plus on the spiritual paths. It's one of the vital ingredients. Hey guys, if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content on spirituality, tantra and more. And if you want to sign up for our online classes or for our retreats, you can see our website on the description below.